I don't think about UC anymore. It's just a non-factor. Yeah, came out of hospital and I was taking, I was taking like 15 pills a day. And I remember like lining them up. So I'd have like breakfast and then I'd line up the pills and I was looking at them and I'd think, is this me forever? And I remember in our weekly calls, you used to tell me, um, you know, think about what is this teaching me? What is this showing me at every sort of stage? So I got into the habit of just allowing these things to come up and then assessing them without judgment. And the blood in the store was, you know, that started to disappear and it was coming up instead of, you know, in every stall, it was coming up maybe in two of them a day and then maybe one a day. And that, that kind of lasted a little bit, but gradually if it was a graph, you'd see it kind of like going down. I remember we were talking about this. I, it felt like I turned a corner mm. um, and everything kind of accelerated a bit. So it was like, whoa, like I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was rough at the start, but worth it. <laughs> yeah, so very systematic, very phased, very deliberate. And um, yeah, we successfully went through it and yeah, phased in um, the foods without much issue at all. And then as the time went on, you know, I'm loving it. Like I'm loving all of this fruit. And I came from like being the meat and cheese eater of, of like, I could win like Guinness World Book records with this. Like, <laughs> I can just do what I want. I've got more energy. I actually started the gym again, 15 or about 15 years ago. I've been diagnosed with um, PCOS and going through this process, those symptoms started to fade away. So I'm just living more of life now. And it's just, it's amazing. Genuinely just, I, I even if it took me two, three years to get here, I would still do, I would still will have done it. it. It's worth every month it takes, every year it takes, it is worth it. Yeah, it's the best decision I'd ever made. Give this video a thumbs up if you know what it's like to live with IBD and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. This channel is designed to help people recover from colitis, Crohn's and any other form of IBD. You can always head to our website, highcarbhealth.com for a free 30 minute consultation from anywhere in the world. And remember, there is a life after colitis. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the podcast or if you're watching this on YouTube, thanks for tuning in. And today we have a testimonial for you from Sibel. Welcome to the show, Sibel. Hey, Shakul. Thanks for having me on. Really excited to be here. Yeah, nice to have you on, Sibel. And we are so excited to share your story because you have overcome ulcerative colitis, which is, you know, what's considered to be medically incurable. But obviously, mm -hmm. if you do the right things, you can heal your body and get on with life, live medication free, just like you have. So how about we get started with your story and discuss a little bit about how this all began for you and kind of symptoms you experienced before you got diagnosed? Sure. So, okay, this is this is going back in the not too distant past now, but some of it, you know, I've got to recall. But um, yeah, I mean, it was about two years ago, I think two years ago to this month that I started just getting really weird bowel movements and I started seeing blood. Um, and it started off like really, really small. And then it became a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. And I was really scared. So I kind of buried my head in the sand at the time. Um, and I didn't do anything about it. I just thought it will go away, um, which I know is a bit silly, but that's, you know, when fear kicks in, sometimes you can just um, bury your head in the sand like I did. So that went on for a few months. Um, and it went away for like a couple of weeks. So I thought, yes, you know, and I hadn't changed anything at this point. I hadn't done anything. It just went away. And um, I thought, okay, cool. It must have just been like a random thing that happened. And then, you know, a couple of weeks went by and it came back again um, and it came back worse. And again, it was kind of like, I wanted to ignore it, but um, it got to the point where it escalated and I actually ended up in hospital. Um, so this was across the span of a few months, um, went into hospital a &E, um, in the UK and they kept me in for, it was about 12 days, 
So when I went in, they weren't actually sure what had happened. So they hooked me up to a whole bunch of drips and because I was physically um, exhausted. I was vomiting all the time. It was like my body was just, I don't know, it was really, really strange. Like I had fatigue before, but it had increased. Um, I couldn't eat anything. I had like no appetite. Um, every time I ate anything, I was vomiting. I started to get really bad diarrhea. Um, so it was all sort of coming to a head until like that peak. Um, as I said, went into the hospital and they, because of the symptoms of the blood in the stool, they did a colonoscopy and um, they came back and said to me that I've got like, I had crazy inflammation um, and ulcers and stuff like that. And um, that it's very likely that I have um, UC, ulcer ulcerative colitis. And I remember at the time, straight away when they said that, in my head, I thought, okay, I need to just find my own way of dealing with this because I knew what was coming next. I knew it was going to be that whole thing of like, you know, once you're leaving the hospital, you're going to get a whole bag of pills and then you're going to be on repeat with those forever. And they actually said that. Um, the doctors, they were so nice, but they were saying things that didn't really sit well with me. Um, so they were talking about, as you mentioned earlier, um, this being something that you have to live with forever. And, you know, you've got to make a decision on what pills you're going to take. And I, I remember the gastro guy saying to me that whatever I do decide, there's really bad, bad negative effects. So I have to just pick which negative effects I want. And I'm like laying in the hospital bed and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> so it was just a lot. It was a lot of like information that just made me feel really crap. Um, and then again, he said to me, you know, don't don't worry about what you're eating. There's a there's loads of people that come in here and they ask about diet and things like that. And he said, it's got nothing to do with diet. Um, just eat what you want. It's got nothing to do with it. And that didn't even make sense to me. <laughs> so there were all these red flags going on while I was in there. Um, and yeah, it was just, you know, when I came out of hospital, I felt a bit better, but funnily enough, my bowel movements and the urgency and the blood in the stool whilst I was in the hospital increased like massively. So I was just really concerned and just scared and, you know, all, all of the stuff that you'd expect. Um, yeah, came out of hospital and I was taking, <laughs> I was taking like 15 pills a day. And I remember like lining them up. So I'd have like breakfast and then I'd line up the pills and I was looking at them and I'd think, is this me forever? So I was on um, steroids and they put me on a really high dosage in the hospital. So I had to phase them out. Um, they said to me, if I stop like abruptly, it will I don't know, create like a shock in the body and it will have an adverse effect. So I, I, I was taking these and phasing them out, but it was going on for, I think it was maybe about three months. So I was going down a few milligrams a week, but then I was also taking um, a whole bunch of other pills and then pills to stop the adverse effects of the pills that I was taking that they gave me. So it was like a, a bucket of pills. Um, and it was very soon after I came out of hospital that I started researching for alternative things. I think it was literally within the first week. And that's when I found you guys on Google. And I found like the videos and the testimonials and I started watching them. And um, I contacted you guys, I filled out the form. And that's what started the journey from, from there. Yeah, so that's, that's really you know, quite a full on experience, very similar to what Shamiz was experiencing as well. Mm -hmm. You know, because he went into hospital with a mild case of ulcerative colitis. Not, it was a mild case of colitis because he didn't have any, have any ulcers at that point. Mm -hmm. And then under the care of the medical team, it progressed to severe ulcerative colitis. So the ulcers developed in the hospital, not before. And, mm -hmm. and, and the symptoms became more and more severe the more medications he was given. You know, mm -hmm. So it started with antibiotics and steroids, and then he was up to 80 milligrams of prednisone. 
And, you know, wow. And on 80 milligrams of prednisone, he was going 30 to 40 times a day. You know, so that's, it doesn't, you know, just because you end up in, in the care of the medical team doesn't mean you're going to get relief. And, you know, basically, as you've also experienced, that you can actually get worse because they're putting poison in your body. As, as they said, you know, there's negative effects to every mm -hmm. kind of treatment that they provide to you. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, no one wants to be, you know, in their early years of life, sitting there looking at 15 different pills they have to take every day and thinking this is going to be me for the rest of your life. Um, and, you know, just talk about how that makes you feel from a, from a perspective of, wow, you know, how did this happen? Because it's just, it's just it's such a shock for most people. Absolutely. I mean, for me, I'd never been into hospital before. I'd never, you know, been into the A and E room um, for anything like this. I'd, I'd never taken medication like this before. I'd never been told that I had a condition that I was going to have to just deal with for the rest of my life, and to take that much medication. You know, when I was looking at it, I thought to myself. I never even saw my grandma taking this much, much medication at once, you know, and there's me sitting there um, at like 35 years old at the time. And I was 36, I can't remember now, 35 um, last year. And just, it was just horrible. And it would take me ages to swallow them because one of them, um, which I can never pronounce, mezelazine, mezelazine, the, yeah, that one. Every time I would swallow it and I had to like take like six of them a day in the morning, it would physically make me want to vomit. I don't know what it was, like it would literally try and swallow it and I would, and at times I did actually um, vomit. And to me, in my mind, I thought to myself, clearly my body's rejecting this for some reason. Um, I kept trying to take them because I was actually scared at the time as well. What's gonna happen if I stop taking them now? Because there was all that fear going on. So I knew I didn't want to take them. But then at the same time, at that point, I thought if I stop taking them now and I'm experiencing these symptoms right now, because I didn't know, you know, what I know now, um, I was really scared about what would happen if I just stop. So I was stuck in that sort of limbo of mm -hmm. what I know feels right for me to do moving forward, but just the fear of where I was at at that point. And I remember progressively, like maybe about... September, October, maybe about a month and a half in after taking the medication, it was mentally affecting me. So I was, um, uh, you'll probably remember this, like there was a point, like a couple of weeks where I went missing. <laughs> yeah, it, it affected me mentally. And um, I went to the GP and I spoke to them and they were like, yeah, like this is the effects of um, this type of uh, um, steroid pill. And mm -hmm. The, and it was like okay so you probably can't take this one then you'll need to take this other one but then it has the side effects of xyz so it was just like this is just a mess <laughs> that's how it felt yeah 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 and, and and you know i was about to just talk about the fact that your story is so much more than just physical because as you went through this whole healing experience mm -hmm. you had to overcome a whole lot of mental and spiritual situations as well um in your life that you know you had to overcome them to heal and so many people have to do that but they don't realize how important it is you know and the main focus is only what can i eat to make this better mm -hmm. and yes that's obviously a huge part of the healing journey but we also have to think about the mental aspect of healing because the mind and the gut are so intrinsically connected that if you don't look at what's going on in your mind and the stresses that you're under. And, you know, you talk about fear, fear is a big stressor mm -hmm. on people's lives and fear is basically a lack of knowledge, right? I, it's it's yeah. such a simple yeah. thing. Fear is a lack of knowledge because, you know, if you go into a dark place and you can't see anything, you don't know what's there, you can get scared. As soon as the lights turn on and you can see whatever's there, it's the same situation, but now you're not scared anymore yeah absolutely one, one different thing just the, the knowledge of knowing what's there and mm -hmm. so that's why when you join the program it is so much about empowering you with knowledge to understand not only what your body is doing but why 
it is doing those mm -hmm. things and when you know the why doing the what becomes so much easier and and then you can really ground yourself into that understanding of okay this is what i need to do and this is why i'm doing it uh, and it makes it so much easier to deal with the symptoms so talk about you know obviously you, you were quite keen to join the program after finding out about high carb health it didn't take you very long to get a hold of us and 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 kind of understand that there was a different way than the medical system so what made you interested in joining and then what did you learn when you started the program from all the information that we sent you yeah so um i mean for me i've always had this thing where i i'm just not a fan of pills and medication and stuff like that because i know that there are negative effects that come with it and it's not it's just not the path that i choose for myself um so at that point when i'd been diagnosed i was already in my mind i thought there's got to be another way and I had come across your website and I was reading just all of the, I was going through some of the articles and just reading like everything about you guys. And I came across the testimonials and I thought to myself, okay, you know, is this real? If it is, then there's going to be people that have had success with it. And if it's more than a handful of people, I know that they're onto something here. So I found your YouTube channel. I started going investigator mode, Sherlock mode. And I was like, find the Instagram find the YouTube, <laughs> like Google everything. So I found all of the testimonials and some of the videos actually came up on the Google search anyway. And I watched, uh, I think it was one or two at the beginning. And um, even after I had spoke to you guys, I was continuously watching them. But at the start, I'd watched um, a couple of them and they were completely different people coming from completely different situations and completely different um belief systems and you know all of that different parts of the world different circumstances but they'd all reached the same um, outcome they had healed from what they'd been diagnosed with um and I thought to myself okay so you know it, it doesn't this isn't just something that you know if you have really mild symptoms and you've only you know you've been diagnosed for a couple of months then you can heal or you know it's or the opposite, if you've had it for ages and you know, you're know you of a particular age, then you can heal yourself. There was all these different types of people. And I started to go through the, the other testimonials and, uh, testimonials and I just saw like a wide spectrum of people that had healed. And it kind of just, I was like, okay, <laughs> you know, I thought, cool, like this is, I immediately thought this is my solution and I wanna find out more. And I'd already decided before I actually spoke to you guys that I was going to make that move and, and join because the alternative, like the opposite, was not for me. I was not on the train of taking all those pills forever, dealing, you know, masking the symptoms and not really dealing with the root, um, you know, all of that stuff, going, having hospital appointments all the time, doing colonoscopies all the time because in the UK, like they, I, I don't know if it's different everywhere else, but we've got a free healthcare system and they want to bring you in all the time and, you know, do colonoscopies every year. And I just thought, I don't want to do that all the time. Like this is, and, and there's risks to that. It's very invasive. Um, so it was like, go this way or like go this way that I found, which just makes so much sense to me. Um, so I had the call, the three, I think it was half an hour call with um, Shamiz. And um, he was just, you know, talking me through a bit about his experience, um, how he healed. And he answered some of the questions that I had um, at the time. And they were around, like, when I think about it now, it's like, I'm not worried about th those things at all anymore. I was asking him about, okay, you know, plant-based diet, what about protein? <laughs> what about xyz you know what about um this and that and um he demystified like as much as he could in that duration of the call um all of the sort of preconceptions that I had about things but um after I joined then you guys sent me you know like a a list of things for me to watch to read um, all of that to educate myself on the process and what's going to be happening with my body and why it's happening and a lot of it was just 
I hadn't even thought about this stuff before. I didn't even think, you know, why is my body um, creating this inflammation? And it wasn't what I thought it was. <laughs> so there was a lot of um, just easy to follow information. You sent me some of your um, events that you did as well. It's just, yeah. And I think that was really important because like you said, instead of just jumping in and, and doing, 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 if you understand why you're following a certain process, then you know what to expect and you're more likely to stick to it. And that education that you get, that you take that with you for the rest of your life. So it was really helpful that that sort of kickstart with uh, the education before we even got into the diet and you know taking the action and, and and all of that so yeah that's that's such an important thing because we really want our clients to understand you know why the body's doing these things before they get stuck into the practicalities of it because the knowledge is is the power the knowledge is the information that you need to know what to do and if you don't have that it, it's not as easy to stick to what was what's well, considered a reasonably strict diet. Mm. Uh, obviously we have a transition process that makes it a bit easier. So you're not going on to like a very, very, um, I guess, limited elimination diet straight away. Mm -hmm. But uh, still kind of considering where most people start from, even the transition diet's pretty strict, you know, mm -hmm. considering, you know, it's only whole foods and we're not having any kind of processed things. And uh, so, it's a big departure from where people are. So we have to kind of step our way through that process. And uh, yeah, the information pack is just a really important starting piece um, to get you moving in the direction you want to head to. All right. So the fun part, well, not the fun part, I suppose. You know? <laughs> I guess the part that everyone wants to know about is, is, is the whole healing experience about what happened to your body. How did you detoxify uh, what were the symptoms you experienced as you went through the healing phase? Uh, so let's let's discuss that. Yeah. Um, okay. So for me, it was pretty rough at the start. So I, my bowel movements and and all of that, they had increased a bit at the start. Um, that didn't last for long though. I remember it sort of plateaued out and it started going down a little bit, a little bit. Mm. But what I had a lot of was um, I was just vomiting a lot. <laughs> I was vomiting a lot. I remember I spent like a one week solid just on the sofa sleeping and, and my dad was like bringing me watermelon and stuff like that and I and I, I couldn't even really turn over to eat it this was like when the when the detoxification was really just you know it was really present um my skin started shedding um I looked like a snake <laughs> like I remember taking pictures of it and you know if I was walking on like rugs in the house, there'd be like a trail of me, <laughs> like behind me. My hair started falling out. Um, I had a big emotional detox, like massive one. Um, and uh, what else did I experience? I think it was mainly that. Um, and that was at the start. And I mean, the sort of intense part of it, it lasted for, maybe a few weeks, but then it kind of started to phase out a bit. So, you know, I wouldn't vomit all the time. It might just be like, it might crop up randomly one week and, you know, it would be that. And then, um, you know, my hair would fall out, but then it kind of stopped. Um, the skin shedding kind of shed for a little bit and then it stopped and I had like great brand new skin. I was like, woohoo. Um, <laughs> And the emotional detox, I think that was the one that went on the most. And I think for me, that makes sense because prior to um, my symptoms flaring up, I was under a lot of stress. So I was having like panic attacks and, and stuff like that. Just, um, I work for myself and I was just loading on work all the time, just stressed out with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so I think I was, just holding in a lot of uh, a lot of that, and that began began to surface throughout the process. And I remember in our weekly calls, you used to tell me, um, you know, think about what is this teaching me? What is this showing me? 
at every sort of stage. So I got into the habit of just allowing these things to come up and then assessing them without judgment. And then when I could kind of like let them go, let them go. And it took a while, it took a while, but you know, eventually these things kind of phased out and then the bowel movements reduced even more and even more and they got quite low and they sort of plateaued a bit, but then they went down again and the blood in the stool was, you know, that started to disappear and it was coming up instead of, you know, in every stool, it was coming up maybe in two of them a day and then maybe one a day. And that, that kind of lasted a little bit, but gradually if it was a graph, you'd see it kind of like going down across that period of time and it definitely took a lot of patience um and not you know judging myself to think why am I not healed already like there's some people that have healed in three months why haven't I what am I doing wrong um so I learned to just allow my body to do what it needed to do because I didn't get to where I was with the UC overnight that was like 20 years of eating crisps and pizza and cheese and as much meat as possible I come from like a medita Mediterranean background so it's like meat all the time um you know and I was just eating junk food I wasn't taking care of myself so there was I'd say maybe quite a bit for my body to um detoxify but um yeah once I got past that sort of rough part and I just thought if I just you know hold out do what I need to do do what you've you know, you've said to me, and each week catching up on the calls, just keep going, keep going. And that's what kept me going. I think like the weekly touch base, just, it was like, okay, this touch base is done. Now just get through the next week, <laughs> whatever that brings. And then it would be like another point touch base. And then, you know, and eventually those um, detox symptoms faded out. And it got to a point where I remember we were talking about this. I, it felt like I turned a corner mm. um, and everything kind of accelerated a bit. So it was like, whoa, like I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was rough at the start, but worth it. <laughs> yeah, and, and your, your experience is slightly different to what a lot of people on the program go through because your healing was a bit slower and steadier, which meant it took you longer for all the mm -hmm. symptoms to go away. I think it ended up taking eight or nine months from when you started yeah. to when all the mm -hmm. symptoms kind of disappeared, where most people take maybe, you know, three to five months before mm -hmm. their symptoms stop. So, um, and, and I think a big part of that was that whole emotional detoxification that needed to happen because you needed to uh, confront all those, those demons in a way that, that, you had been suppressing for a long time. And a lot of people use food as a way to suppress their emotions because it numbs you. So when you can't do that anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> everything yeah. starts coming to the surface and you have to deal with yeah. it. And, and that's that's yeah. part of the the um, emotional detoxification that people go through. And, and obviously uh, some people uh, have to dig deeper um, into mm. themselves to overcome that and other people don't. But um, so... Yeah, it took about eight or nine months before you were finally like, yes, all the symptoms have gone, which was totally fine. I mean, I think anybody would, no one really complain about, you know, healing an incurable chronic disease after eight or nine months. But um, in terms of, in terms of the whole experience, I think, yeah, obviously the, the, the beginning part was the most intense when you had the physical and the emotional experience. And then as you kind of continue the symptoms were there but they were not they were really minimal like for the last three or four months of of the journey you know it wasn't like controlling your life but it was just like little spots of blood here and there or a little bit of diarrhea and mucus and things like that so um and i and i think those last few at least the last two or three months was just you overcoming all those those mental and emotional um kind of confronting all that and dealing with it as, as and then as you can took away all those layers of conditioning the symptoms just gradually eased off and eased off because you weren't putting as much stress on that and you were more at peace with who you are and the situation you're in and, and you're accepting of it and i think when you do that things start to get a lot better so uh then we go to post healing right so you've got to, you know you've mm -hmm. done the transition phase then you've done the healing phase and and, mm -hmm. and the healing phase is i guess by far the most difficult part of this journey um, but 
And the most exciting part is the post healing phase because every week's like Christmas because you get to introduce new things into your diet yeah. again. So Leah, talk about how we do that and, and how that went for you. Yeah, so um, we waited until I reached a certain uh, point with uh, my symptoms and, and all of that. And, you know, we were like, okay, let's move to the post healing diet. We're going to test, test different um, fruits and veg and bring them in in a really systematic way. And I remember it was, this wasn't even long ago, but um, you know, it was particular types of fruits and particular types of vegetables phasing in. So it wasn't just like a random mix. Um, it was, you know, the, the stomach's gonna be ready for this type of fruit, potentially at this stage, let's test things from this category. So I remember, <laughs> I remember each week when you'd send me like the list of things that I could test I was just like yes so I was just like excited about the silliest things at this point I was like dying over the fact that I could eat I could test oranges and like testing strawberries and you know all of this kind of stuff but um yeah it was very systematic very controlled we took it week by week step by step really tracking you know if it had impacted any symptoms if I had regressed at any point and I, I think it was like maybe the fifth week I had some symptoms show up again so we spoke about it and um, you were like okay you know let's let's hold off on adding anything else let's you know um, simplify again and it cleared up really quickly I, it, my symptoms showed up I had, I had a little bit of blood in the stool um, I think two or three times and then um yeah it, it kind of just didn't show up again but we gave that window of room just to make sure that we weren't pushing it too far too soon um so that was just really sort of it was at a comfortable pace and it was interesting because I'd almost forgotten how to cook certain things it, or like mix it it's like okay so what do I do with these mushrooms now or whatever it was like what am I going to do so you know it was almost like just a brand new slate but it was exciting at the same time um so yeah each time I was going to the supermarket to buy new stuff it just felt like you said like Christmas <laughs> I was just really excited I still do get excited but um yeah so very systematic very phased very deliberate and um yeah we successfully went through it and yeah, phased in um, the foods without much issue at all. So that that I would say was quite um, easy. And because, you know, um, we were touching base every week, that's what just helped keep things um, controlled. And I could email you just like usual anyway and ask you, is this okay? Or can I have this, you know, with this or whatever? Because I had... Um, I remember I just had a little bit of lack of clarity with certain things because they were new again now. So, yeah, I'd say that was quite a smooth, a smooth and exciting process. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and because you've gone on such a simple diet for a long period of time as you, as you heal, your taste mm -hmm. does change. And so when, oh, yeah. when you introduce new foods back in, just talk to everyone about what that's like, you know, because you don't start introducing all the spices and herbs and stuff straight away. But even then, because your taste buds are so used to these natural tastes now, it's like, uh, uh, you know, you, you explain it. What is it like when people, when you yeah, get to taste new foods? Yeah, it's just, it just it's tastes brand new. Like before, when I eat, like, let's just use the orange as an example. I, I wasn't taste, I wasn't, you know, it, it just had a different sort of alive flavor. It was just like more bursting with flavor. And I think because of the simplification, bringing these new um, foods in, even at the simplification state, actually, like even when I was like steaming carrots, it was like these carrots just taste so flavorsome. <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, there's just a more powerful flavor to everything. So that little bit of, um, you know, cumin that I might put on the mash or whatever, I'm just tasting it differently now. And I don't want all of the sort of like dead foods, like all the processed stuff. Cause it just, it's like, it's bland. Like it's, it just tastes blah. 
But um, yeah, it's just the simple things like strawberries taste different. Bananas, I didn't really like bananas at the start. And like the banana smoothies that I was having when I started, it, it used to take me ages to drink it. Cause I was like, I don't, this just tastes weird to me. And then as the time went on, you know, I'm loving it. Like I'm loving all of this fruit. And I came from like being the meat and cheese eater of, of like, I could win like Guinness World Book records with this. Like, honestly, like I would eat so much meat, so much cheese, so much processed stuff. I came from that. Like I didn't come from um, being vegetarian or vegan for a while. It was like, that's what I ate. I ate meat, cheese and all of that. So, you know, getting to the point where even like green peas, just tastes amazing. Um, yeah, it's just, a, it's like a whole new world. It's like a whole new world. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Honestly, like, I, I didn't think that I would get to where I am now with it, the enjoyment that I have with eating whole foods. Mm -hmm. I didn't anticipate this. Mm. Most people don't. And they, don't, they think, okay, yeah. how am I gonna, gonna eat these type of foods? And, and I was the same, you know, big meat, cheese, and, you know, chocolates and, sodas and yeah you name it <laughs> you know what i mean um mm -hmm. but the joy that i get from a banana smoothie outweighs any of those things yeah. and it's just it's quite fascinating to me how that works and i think it really does have to do with the changes in your body and the changes in your microbiome because the bacteria communicate and when you uh, eating certain foods that they want you know your microbiome actually dictates a lot of your tastes and your preferences and your cravings and so as that shifts and changes and as your taste buds change everything kind of tastes different and, and you start craving those things that make you feel good instead of the things that give you that what we call it that we call it excitotoxic feeling okay? <laughs> <I like that. laughs> yeah, the, the excitotoxins you know in the process which is this heavily flavored um, mm. artificial flavors and colors and the things that really like light things up on your tongue um, yeah it's excitotoxic that's uh, and so you don't you, you don't crave that kind of that high that comes for a couple of minutes with eating those things and you and you you know the way it works is that you know with the excitotoxic foods it, it's, it's it's this intense pleasure for a very short amount of time and then you feel pretty rubbish until your next meal whereas with these healthy whole foods and fruits and vegetables you don't get that same kind of excitotoxic you get the that kind of subtle pleasure that comes with you know the natural tastes and then you and then you just feel better and better as the meal digests in your body and and so it's a completely different experience of of kind of as your day goes on you, you know you don't get tired as the day goes on you don't feel lethargic as the day goes on and, and you have lots of energy, which is quite amazing. Um, so talking about a whole new world, you do, you're living in a whole new world now, in essence, in your mind and in your body <laughs> and um, in the way you perceive it. Um, so what is your life like now? Um, and, you know, compare what it was like before. I mean, you were in the last meeting we had, you were talking about how your birthday was last year compared to this year and, mm. and the different emotions that you had. So kind of like, you know, it's a really interesting comparison about what your life is like now compared to what you had before yeah so you know this time last year and you know the few months before that around my birthday it was just like I had no energy I had and I, when I say no energy I mean to the point where I just couldn't at, at times I couldn't stay awake it was just my body just felt so drained and I hadn't even done much you know so I was just in this sort of loop of just feeling lethargic and not knowing why and thinking, you know, am I lazy or because I had a whole bunch of stuff on my to do list at that time, you know, and I just couldn't get things done. I just always wanted to sleep. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I was having panic attacks and stuff like that, which was new to me. Very, very, you know, it wasn't nice. Um, yeah, I had all of those symptoms and it got to the point where I'd have to think about, I remember there was a, a day and this was the day where I thought, okay, something needs to change. This was before I went into hospital. I was meant to pick up one of my friends to, we were going to go somewhere and it was like a 10 minute drive to go to her house. 
And I was really worried about making that journey because I kept on getting urgency and it was getting worse and worse. So urgency to go to the bathroom. And she had to take the cab <laughs> to go to the place because I couldn't go and get her because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make this journey and get there, you know, without having a bit of an accident. Um, so it was all of these just things that were just getting in the way of just normal stuff. I'm not even talking about like, you know, I want to get on the plane and like fly for eight hours and maybe, you know, all of that. I mean, just normal stuff, driving down the road, like going outside. Um, it was just the, the only thought that I'd have is like, is there a toilet there? Is there going to be a problem? Um, you know, can this bus come fast enough so I can get home? Because, you know, I, I feel like I need to go to the bathroom like urgently. So it was just dictating my life. Um, and I know a lot of people can, you know, identify with this because so many people experience it. And it's just, you know, it just kind of in a way it ruins a lot of stuff for you. Um, you just can't do the simple things that you wanna do. So going through the process with you guys, like fast forwarding a year later, it's just completely different. I was saying to you the other day that um, on the previous call that we had, I don't think about UC anymore. It's just a non-factor. Before it would be, you know, even at the beginning of the process, I'd be thinking about it, it was still a factor. And I was constantly, you know, checking the loo, just making sure what symptoms are showing up. And I was expecting to see a problem. Um, now I expect everything to be normal because my body's functioning perfectly right now. Um, so I can just do what I want. I've got more energy. I actually started the gym again uh a couple of weeks ago so I've got the energy to do that this time last year I couldn't even if I sat on the floor I couldn't even get myself up that's how weak I was I'd lost a lot of weight I was like 48 kg I was really just like yeah I was weak lethargic and that was weird for me because I'd never been that slim before you know I, I looked quite ill um, and now, like, as I said, like, I don't even think about UC. I went on a road trip a couple of weekends ago. I was in the car for like five hours. Perfectly fine. Didn't think about it. Had no issues. You know, same thing driving back. No issues. So it's like I'm, I'm living more of life now because I know what it was like. It's, it's like um, it's almost like the simple things get snatched away from you when you have things like a Crohn's and, and colitis and you really start to appreciate life and you start to just look at, you know, what do I want to do with myself now? And it could be small things. And it is like a second chance because um, I could have still been in the same situation now. I would have been very depressed. You know, it would have been, it would have, I don't even want to think about it. But um, yeah, now I'm living more, of life than I was prior to diagnosis because I appreciate it even more. I know what it's like to, you know, not be able to go anywhere or be feeling so sick that I'm on the sofa for, for a week, not moving. I know what that's like and now that's gone. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know? So I'm just living more of life now and it's just, it's amazing. Genuinely just, I, I even if it took me two three years to get here I would still do I would still have done it. it it's worth every month it takes every year it takes it is worth it because the opposite is just not a life that you know it's not a life to live like that yeah it definitely isn't and that's that's mm. why we're so motivated to do this because obviously we know what that's like with Shamiz and what he went through and how mm -hmm. horrible it is when you're when you're trapped to the toilet basically you yeah. know you, the, the toilet controls you it's it, it controls your thoughts and your, everything and, and you just can't do things and so yeah we want to shout from the rooftops basically you don't have to live like that you know yes it's hard yes you got to do some work to get out of it mm -hmm. you know but you know good things take time and anything that's worth doing it takes effort 
So uh, when when you put that effort in and you and you see the rewards and no risk, no reward, right? You have to take the you got to take the plunge. Absolutely, and and the thing is, it's funny because I'm not someone that shares this kind of stuff on on like things like this or like anything about myself. Really, I'm quite private with with things, but if other people felt the same way and didn't put their stories out there, then I may not have given myself the opportunity to get to the other side of this. So that's why it's so important, you know, I feel to share my story because different stories resonate with different people. And I remember a particular story that I saw on your testimonials back then, it was the one where I was like, okay, I've got to do this. Um, I, it just really clicked for me. So I just feel it's important to just share that um, and let people know that, you know, it can be done. This is, this is normal. We think that it's abnormal for our bodies to heal from things like this, but it's not. <laughs> it's the most normal thing ever. Um, you know, it's just that we may consume other types of information that don't help us believe that it's normal so the body's designed I've gone for health. through it and, the body oh, is absolutely. designed for health you know health is your natural state mm -hmm. and it's always working to bring you back to health what we have to do is get out of the way and create the right conditions and when we do that mm -hmm. the body will work towards and becoming healthy again and and that's all it takes it, it's just the time, the effort, the commitment, and the discipline to get to where you want to get to. And, you know, full credit to you because you did that. You put in a lot of time and effort and, and it wasn't, you know, that quick journey. And, and you had to question yourself quite a few times, you know, am I doing the right thing? Uh, is this actually going to happen for me? Am I capable of this? All of those questions, you know, I remember us discuss, discussing all those things and, and um, yeah, it definitely wasn't easy, but, you know, you just kept believing in yourself and 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 the more you saw the changes the more the belief grew and then every little victory started to add up and then you know each little small step got you to the top of the ladder and, and now you're here um so you know big congratulations to you but towards the end of the, these sessions i always like our clients to to give some advice you know a little bit of something from their heart that that um that people may be able to connect to who are watching this and you know probably in a similar situation to where you were when you first started watching the testimonials. And um, yeah, as you said, I think it's a very important thing that you said, because what we're doing here is creating a catalog of stories and each story builds on the evidence base that, that this is possible and you can do it. And, and this is not something that's a quackery or something that's that's you know as you said it's not abnormal you know healing is your natural state getting healthy is your natural state and so what advice would you give to someone who's watching this and, and um you know is considering making some changes yeah i mean i think if you're in that place and like i was a year ago i would say you've got nothing to lose to see where this will take you um, you guys still do that um, is it half an hour free call just to discuss and just have a chat about things and I think like take that opportunity and just see if you feel it fits for you because like you said Shukul there are so many people there's a catalogue of stories of people that have successfully gone through this process and they're very individual unique different types of people and they've all allowed their bodies to heal from this and I just think give it a go honestly like I don't even want to think about where my life would be now if I had not made that decision it you know this is I'm in an amazing place right now within my health and mental state and and all of that just my perception of life now so if you're thinking about it I say just take that step do do the free call and just see where it goes you've got nothing to lose and so much to gain um and the thing is as well there's so many sort of unexpected benefits from all of this like I um 15 or about 15 years ago I've been diagnosed with um, PCOS and going through this process those symptoms 
started to fade away. And I'd been looking for something to help that for so long. So it's funny because I remember saying to you, it was like, it's like a buy one, get one free for me. <laughs> it was, yeah, there's, there's all these different benefits that you get that you might not even realize. So you end up healing your Crohn's or your UC, but then you also end up, you know, healing X, Y, Z that you may have had. And it's different for everybody. But just from my experience, there was just so much more benefit than the, the primary reason as to why I went through the process with you guys it just changed my entire life and that's genuinely how I feel about it so yeah if you're on the fence just you've got nothing to lose do the do the free call and just see how you feel and it, you know working with you guys is just so easy and it's non-judgmental and you know you talk about in the calls we talk about quite personal sensitive things but it's very non-judgmental and just open and reassuring and yeah it's the best decision I'd ever made in this um in regards to my health and and all of that so yeah oh, that's, that's yeah. incredible and, and you know thank you for those words but one thing you mentioned to me there is is really important is that your body is not just healing one thing you know when you do this process you're healing all the different cells in your body and so yes yeah, so many people see that you know they come to us for colitis and then yeah their polycystic ovarian syndrome is also kind of resolved as they mm -hmm. go through this process because it's a it's a reorganizing of the body and 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 as the toxins are removed and 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 the healing is is you know manifested inside of you you get healthy and that doesn't mean just one part of your body gets healthy it means you get healthy overall yeah. and so that's that's why you know we're so excited because it's it's everything you know it's not just one area that we're focusing on so yeah as i said before you know again really amazing effort uh, from you sabelle and congratulations and you know both shamiz and i are both so proud of you and the effort you put in and um you know my favorite part of this is that you know you now have a life after colitis and, yeah, uh, I do. Yeah. So 100%. congratulations! And, I couldn't and wait for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make you know, as you said, you got a Thank second you. chance, and you're making the most mm. of it. So you know, just keep it up, and and you know, we always say persistence. You know, being persistent will get you there, and being consistent will keep you there. So make sure you stay consistent and you stay there. Okay. 100%. Um, so yep. for everyone who's watching this video or listening to this podcast thank you so much for joining us and i hope you found this video very interesting and um, useful for your journey i'm sure you'll learn a lot from what savelle had to go through and some of the things that she shared with us very personal things and you know thank you so much again it's it's uh, it's not easy to share and go through all that again but you know as you said there's a bigger reason for it and you know we're very thankful that you did that uh, if you're watching this on YouTube uh, and you like this video, give it a thumbs up and, you know, share this around. It's not very easy to find this kind of information. So the more people that share it, the more people will be able to find it. So please share this video. If you've got any questions, you know, ask in the comment section down below and we'll try and answer them as best as we can. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click the subscribe button and that little bell icon will give you notifications of all our recent uploads. Apart from that, thank you so much once again. Thank you, Sabel, for sharing your story. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and for everyone who's watching and listening, make sure you eat plants and lots of them. Take care. Bye.